Okay, moving on. Thank you, Paul. Thank you. 19-092, resolution declaring the town of Boroughville a second amendment sanctuary town. Motion open. Second. Motion open and second. All in favor? Aye. 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 Mr. Fox. Um, I want to uh, uh, thank the uh, town manager, the town solicitor, the, the colonel, who have worked on uh, this with me. Um, I put this uh, forward for consideration by the council for two primary reasons. Uh, the first is rooted in, in history. Um, we're a state that's had one party rule for the better part of 85 years. Um, that rule has resulted quite often in legislation and uh, laws that are passed in Providence that really do not do the taxpayer of this state or the resident of this state any good. They're designed to, uh, they're designed to make the fat cat lobbyists who have most of the representatives and senators in their pockets down there happy. We've become <coughs> all too accustomed in Rhode Island to having unfunded mandates pushed down our throats at the town level. It often results in higher property taxes for our residents. As things roll downhill, it always ends at the town level and the city level. You know, we're looking at legislation that's before the assembly now with continuing contracts and, and other such um, articles that's going to cost the towns incredible amounts of money. Uh, if you look at every major ranking that we, we see in the United States, Rhode Island ranks at the bottom of it. We're the least competitive, we're the one of the most highest taxed, you name it, we're at the bottom of those rankings, or if it's a bad ranking, we're any at the top of it. That is from the incestuous relationship between the special interests and our legislators that it's existed in Providence for far too many years. The second reason I put this on is also rooted in history. Um, the right to bear arms uh, as, as afforded all citizens underneath the Constitution is an historical event. It was, it was seen as the, one of the most important aspects by our founders and they put it in the Bill of Rights. The state of Rhode Island adopted the same position when it adopted the, its constitution and put it in the 22nd Amendment. For far too long in Rhode Island, as we've seen with other creep of legislation, we've had a progressive creep in this state, where every year we have to put on our yellow t-shirts and go down to the state house and fight against the governor and often against the progressive wing in that building to maintain our constitutional rights. And I, for one, am tired of it. And I believe now is the time to begin pushing back. And it's with those two points in mind. Listen, I travel all over the world. I've done business in countries where one of the primary goals of the governments, their first goal is to disarm their population. Communist China, the former Soviet Union, current day Russia, Turkmenistan, Pakistan. I've done business in a lot of them. I've traveled through them. I've seen firsthand what a government will do to disarm its population and the control that they wield over that population from that point forward. I would ask for your support on this resolution. I believe this is going to draw a line in the sand and tell Providence not only are we going to defend our constitutional rights, but we're tired of unfunded mandates, and we're going to begin to fight back. Okay. Anybody else? Mr. Well, Anderson. May I speak to my amendment to uh, Please do. Don's initial uh, thing I spent some time looking at? And I basically thought to myself, if somebody wants to seize this lightning rod issue, and misconstrue what it is we're resolving, um, how might that happen? And, and it occurred to me that it might happen from someone who doesn't even understand the Rhode Island and the federal laws for uh, gun purchases and ownership today. And I really want to put the accent on the law-abiding citizens of Boroughville and note that the resolution is to protect and defend the law-abiding citizens' Second Amendment rights from being encroached upon but it does absolutely nothing to impact those who have forfeited their Second Amendment right and are currently not legally entitled to firearms ownership or purchasing. And basically the wording in my added whereas comes out of the ATF 4473 form you have to fill out to purchase a firearm and 
My hunch is those who would choose to misconstrue our resolution have never seen one of these or know that these prohibitions for gun purchases even exist. And so I just wanted to put the accent on the law abiding part. I fully support that we should be defending the Second Amendment rights of the law abiding citizens. That's the reasoning for the amendment that I proposed. Okay. Anybody else? John? Yes, sir. Yeah. Thank you. I agree with everything that's been said here tonight. You know, I've looked at Councilor Anderson's amendment to Councilor Fox's resolution here. Everything looks good. My only concern, actually, is where Councilor Anderson added law-abiding people of the town of Barville. If the state legislature passes a law that now could technically make a person a non-law-abiding citizen based on that law, are we somehow alienating them with their, should we somehow perhaps change it to maybe constitutional law-abiding? I mean, earlier in Dennis's amendment, he pretty much covers everyone who's not a law-abiding citizen by basically, in the whereas, is stating, you know, the state laws, anyone who's, you know, a convicted felon, a fugitive. Well, those are federal laws, though. That's right off the ATF form. Okay, federal. So that's federal. Laws. So by putting just law abiding there, it almost seems contradictory because earlier in that statement, you know, it says that we're not going to, you know, we're not going to abide by any unconstitutional law that may be passed by a legislation. So it just, that seems a little confusing to me and almost contradictory. So I would almost suggest we either take out law abiding there or we add perhaps constitutional law abiding or any other wording maybe the solicitor might suggest. Yep. I know what I meant, and it's not what you're saying, but I, I defer to the solicitor. I don't think you need to add constitutional law abiding. If you want to include law abiding in there, I think it speaks for itself. Um, so I understand uh, what Jeremy's trying to say, but whether or not you have law abiding <clears throat> or not, and I mean, it's a distinction without a difference. Law abiding is law abiding. That means someone who has not violated the law which has made them a prohibited person under either state or federal law um, and that includes people with uh, felonies um, who are under indictment fugitive from justice etc as, as included in Dennis's proposed amendment whether you want to whether you choose to include those that portion of it or not I think is a I, I defer to the council I certainly understand why Dennis wants to put this language in there because it is these exceptions uh, that make someone a prohibited person. So, well, but I don't think you need to add constitutional before law abiding. So even if the state legislature passes a law that not, what we're current law abiding citizens may not be current law abiding citizens, that doesn't I cause a conflict there? Uh, for example, um, let's say they come out with some sort of a, uh, a magazine cap. So your standard off-the-shelf block that maybe holds 13 rounds and you, you have, you cut, they pass a law that the current cap or the new cap can only be 10, 10 mag rounds or 10 round mags. So now you could potentially become a non-law-abiding citizen by being in possession of them. In possession of them, then you have to legally, unless the, the law is challenged and overturned, you have to surrender those magazines. Which ain't going to happen by many people. It's not going to happen. No. But Isn't that part of the reason for our resolution here tonight, then, Councilor Fox? Yeah. Look, I mean, I, um, I, I, I understand what you're saying. You know, this resolution it goes to the unfunded mandate aspect as well, because if they do pass uh, a law that bans a particular capacity in a magazine, our resolution is stating that. We do not agree with that pass. It's our constitutional right to, to carry that magazine. And therefore, we're not going to fund the storage or the confiscation of such magazines in this town. I believe we, we are still law abiding underneath the Constitution, despite what the state law may say. But it doesn't say constitutional law, it just says law abiding. If the it, state legislature passes the law, you may no longer I mean, be law-abiding. If, if Councilman uh, Anderson is okay with striking law-abiding, I'm okay with it as well. Yeah, I, I do not want it to work against us. Yeah, that's, all, that's my only concern. Okay. 
Well, going back to almost constitutional, uh, to uh, colonial times, uh, most people don't own weapons and don't know how to shoot a weapon. But that doesn't mean that you shouldn't be for this. And the, and, and the reason is, they'll chip away at, our, at the Constitution and its amendments one at a time. And they'll eventually get to you. They'll eventually get to the amendment that protects what you're doing. And I think, I think it's important for people to realize that this is, a, this is a right that was given to us by the Constitution. And whether we choose to uh, exercise that right at this time or not, uh, is no is no concern to the fact that people deserve the rights given to them under the Constitution, and we have to fight for each other's rights so that when it's our time, there'll be people to help us. Anybody else? Well, just my, my final comment would just be: I just want to be perfectly clear that you know, if we strike it, that's fine. But I mean, the message I want to come across in this resolution is. And I'll use round numbers. There's 100 million people that own 300 million guns in this country. They are not the problem. Right. Okay. Those law-abiding citizens who legally own them, that's not the problem. The problem is something else. That's the group that we're defending their rights from being encroached on because they haven't done anything to deserve their rights to be infringed. But I believe the overall spirit of this resolution carries that forward. So just yeah. anyway. Yep. Okay. I think we're all sort of on the same page. Yeah. Well, the well, I would make a uh, make a motion to accept the resolution as presented, with the exception of striking the word "law abiding" from the second to the last. There's two, two places. Uh, in two places. Second to the last, and I'm sorry, Don. Second to last, what? Whereas, as listed. Yep. And where's the other one? Last paragraph. Last paragraph. Last paragraph, okay. So that's the um, the resolution as a, uh, with the amendments pro proposed by Mr. Anderson. Correct. Excluding those two law Correct. items. Got it. Thank you. Okay. We have a second. Second. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Okay, moving on.